you Google the 2013 NFL mock draft, it will kick back some 40 million results. <laughs> so at Campus Insiders, we're making history with the 2013 NFL unmock draft, the guys you wouldn't want to take. Joining us, managing editor Pete Futek here in studio, and we welcome our NFL insider, former Denver general manager Ted Sunquist. The rules are very simple here, gentlemen. Five rounds you must choose among the top prospects. Pete, we'll start with you. Who's the number one guy to stay away from? Geno Smith, Geno Smith, Geno Smith. That's three. Uh, I'm concluding <laughs> that he's that much I want to unmock him. Here's the problem. He's probably not the, one of the top five quarterbacks taken in last year's draft. And this year he's probably going to go number six overall to Arizona because they're desperate for a quarterback. I know they made some offseason moves, but he's just not the right fit for the NFL. He's uh, really sort of a, a system quarterback. I don't see him being an NFL drop back passer. He does have a nice arm. He's okay. I think he'll be functional, but I just don't see him hosting the Lombardi trophy. He's my number one overall pick. Yeah, I agree with you, Pete. I think you're trying to cram a square peg into a round hole and a guy that normally would probably go in the second round. My guy's Tyron Matthew, the honey badger out of LSU. Defensive back, we've talked about it before. He's small and he's slow, and he's got off the field problems that need to get cleaned up. I don't want to inherit those by taking this player on my football team. Yeah, short and slow is no way to go through life as a <laughs> the defensive back, son. Let's move on to the second selection in the 2013 Unmock NFL Draft. Ted, who's your pick? Well, I'm going to stick with that SEC. I tell you what, they've got a lot of them that are going to be great players, and they got some that I would stay away from, and that's Alec Ogletree, linebacker, Georgia Bulldogs. Former safety playing linebacker, and sometimes when he's down in the box, he plays like it. Can't get off a block, not a great tackler at times. He's got his own off the field issues and a player that I just don't feel comfortable adding to my roster. Speaking of not getting off a block, the guy who might go number two overall to Jacksonville, Deion Jordan of Oregon. I have a problem with guys who don't really fit an NFL type. He's a true tweener, 6'6", about 250, real thin, gets beaten up a little bit too easily, chopped down a little bit too easily. I know he's got freakish athletic skills. I know they see him as a big time pass rusher. He was just okay in college, not elite. I think for the number two overall pick, that's a real high price to pay for a project. Two rounds down, and Ted agrees with you on that pick. Moving on to round three, who's your guy? I am going to go with Bjorn Warner of Florida State, the defensive end who put up monster numbers against Murray State, Savannah State, and a bad Florida pass, uh, pass uh, coverage team. I just think he is going to struggle at the next level. He was surrounded by great talent on the Seminoles. He's a good talent. He tested poorly at the combine, wasn't as athletic as everybody wanted him to be. He's sliding on down. He might be a second-round pick now, but I'm a little bit scared off him as a first-round cal caliber pick. Pick. Well, I agree with you there, and I tell you what, I'm going to make the fans down in Athens, Georgia really happy. I'm going with another Bulldog linebacker, Jarvis Jones. Started out this entire process very, very high on some people's list, but he has slid down fast. Spinal stenosis that can't get cleared up, and a guy who just did not work out very well at the pro day. I know he's got some big numbers, but I don't see him transfer over to his athletic skills. All right, guys, you each have two picks remaining. Ted, who is your fourth round pick? Might as well stay in the SEC, guys. I'm not picking on them. They just come to me. <laughs> and that's quarterback Tyler Bray, Tennessee Volunteers. Over the years, in his three years as a, as a quarterback there at, at Tennessee, has never completed over 60% of his passes. And in the college game, it's just pitching caps. This is a big, tall, non-athletic guy in the pocket. I think he's a, he's a sitting target, really, for NFL pass rushers. I would not take Tyler Bray. The other problem with Tyler Bray, too, is look at who are the top wide receivers in this draft. Justin Hunter, Cordero Patterson, and Derek Rogers. Three guys who we got to work with over the years. They might be three of the top five wide receivers in this draft. Production was okay, not great. Why, let, let's keep picking on the SEC. I'm sticking with Sharif Floyd. He might be a top five overall pick. The defensive tackle from Florida. My problem with him is... He's supposed to be this incredible interior pass rusher who didn't do much as a pass rusher at Florida. He was a great part of a, of a stellar run defense, just did not get into the backfield enough. If you can't really do it in college, why are you going to be able to do it in the pros? Uh, he's a good player. I do like him in the late first round, but again, he's probably going to go top five overall. Yeah, I agree with you again, Pete. Warren Sapp thinks he's the next Warren Sapp, and, <laughs> I, and I just don't see it. I don't see it at all. I'm going to go on the inside with my next pick, Khalid Holmes, offensive center, Southern California. This is a guy who's played in the interior for the Trojans for a number of years. He's well-liked in the program, but I tell you what, he's, he's well-liked by defensive nose tackles as well. <laughs> Pushing right back into Matt Barkley's face. 
It's one of the reasons why I don't think they throw downfield all that much and they're always looking at the perimeter. You'd like a center that could be stout and really anchor down. That's not Holmes' play. I like one of the negatives on Cleed Holmes is that he thinks too much. He actually has a brain in his head, not really the Neanderthal type. My final guy, I don't want Manti Teo. I don't want everything that comes with this circus. Now, I know it's all going to die down after a little bit. He's going to be a solid player. He's not going to be Ray Lewis. He's not going to be anything fantastic. He'll just get a lot of tackles from things funneled his way. I just don't want to deal with all the outside baggage. I don't think he's a bad guy. I don't think there's any major problems there. It's not an Alec Ogletree situation. I just don't want to deal with that circus at the end of the first round. Well, guys, knowing who not to take is almost as valuable as knowing who did pick on draft day? Pete, Ted, guys, we thank you very much. Thank you. CampusInsiders.com, we've got exclusive interview with the new Wisconsin head coach. Gary Anderson is his boss. Barry Alvarez being too meddlesome. Find out right now.